Good morning students. So today we are going to discuss about vessel ganglia or vessel nuclei. So before going to know this, please subscribe to my channel to get the new videos of neuroanatomy and as well as the other classes. Okay, so let us dive into this vessel ganglia. So what is this vessel ganglia? So vessel ganglia, they are nothing but large masses of gray matter situated within the white core of each cerebral hemisphere and form essential constituents of the extrapyramidal system. So, in our previous class, we have seen the cerebrum when we just gone through this uh, inter interior, I mean structure of the cerebrum, we have seen the outer part is called as cortex. Okay, so then inner part, below that we can identify the white matter. So, under this cortex, under the cortex, we can identify the nuclear masses. They are nothing but basal ganglia. So let me show you this. Yes, coming to this location, exactly where they are located. So in this picture, in this picture, we can identify. In this picture, try to see carefully. As coming to this, the basal ganglia, the teal and cephalic basal ganglia comprise the carpus striatum, the claustrum and the amygdaloid body. Remember the three terms, one is carpus striatum, then second one is the claustrum, then third one is amygdaloid body. Then functionally the term basal ganglia also include substantia nigra and subthalamus. Okay, so let us see the what is carpus striatum exactly. So coming to the carpus striatum, so these three terms you try to remember, carpus striatum, plastrum and amygdaloid body. Then moving to this carpus striatum, carpus striatum, location of the carpus striatum, here you can identify, we just took a coronal section to identify clearly the basal ganglia. Okay, so in this coronal section, we can identify the thalamus which is present over here. Okay, thalamus which is present medially, lateral to the thalamus we can identify this basal ganglia, basal ganglia and this corpus striatum exactly, sorry, corpus striatum exactly, it is located lateral to the thalamus. Okay, now this corpus striatum is divided almost uh, completely by the fibers of the internal capsule into the medial part cardiac nucleus lateral part lentiform nucleus let me show you that so here i'm just showing you the internal capsule the white matter of the internal capsule okay the fibers of internal capsule which are separating the carpus striatum into two parts can you identify over here yes yeah here this red color i'm showing you in the animation that is nothing but the internal capsule the fibers of internal capsule is separating this carpus striatum into two parts. One is caudate nucleus medially, lentiform nucleus laterally. Okay. Then the head of the nucleus, head of the caudate nucleus. Here you can identify the head. Let me show you next diagram. Yes, try to see here. The head of the caudate nucleus. Here you can identify the caudate nucleus, and this is the lentiform nucleus. The head of the caudate nucleus and lentiform nucleus are, however, are connected by a gray matter, a band of gray matter just below the anterior limb of the internal capsule. Anterior limb of internal capsule. So, hence, it it entire this. Entire this, entire this part, the whole matter mass presents a striated appearance. Can you find a striations over here? So entire this matter, it consisting of a striated appearance. That is the reason it is called as carpus striatum. Carpus striatum. So that is about the carpus striatum.
Yes, uh, till now we have seen the corpus striatum and how the caudate nucleus and the lentiform nucleus, the part of the lentiform nucleus that is putamen, which is these two structures which are joining with each other. So here you can see that <coughs> there's a putamen, then here you can see the globus pallidus. So the lentiform nucleus parts are outermost the dark color one is nothing but the putamen and inner part is called as the globus pallidus. So the putamen and the globus pallidus they are separated by external medullary lamina. External medullary lamina. Then again the globus pallidus structurally it is divided into two parts by internal medullary lamina into outer and inner parts of the globus pallidus. So here you can identify the outer globus, outer part of the globus pallidus and here which is medially that is nothing but inner part of the globus pallidus. So then coming to this in structures, connections and functions, the caudate nucleus. So the caudate nucleus and the putamen and the putamen so they are similar and they collectively collectively called as neostriatum understood so the caudate nucleus and the putamen they are connected with each other uh, let me show you the diagram over here yes here in this picture i'm just showing you here can identify entire this green color one is nothing but the caudate nucleus and this blue color one is the lentiform nucleus so here you can identify the head of the caudate nucleus and the lentiform nucleus the part of the lentiform nucleus is the putamen so both are joined with each other and together these two parts together called as neostriatum neostriatum shortly we can call it as striatum okay then coming to this uh, globus pallidus globus pallidus so this globus pallidus which provides the chief efferent fibers chief efferent fibers of basal ganglia is known as paleostriatum or shortly we can call it as pallidum so here the caudate nucleus and the putamen they are connectedly or i mean jointly we can we can call it as striatum whereas the globus pallidus outer and inner we can call it as the pallidum okay pallidum and then striatum right so then moving yes it is the location of the basal ganglia exactly so here you can identify this is the caudate nucleus and this is the head of the caudate nucleus which is present in the frontal lobe of the cerebrum whereas entire the body of the caudate nucleus which is extending into the parietal lobe and the tail of the caudate nucleus which is occupying which is enters into the temporal lobe okay so this is the exact location of the caudate nucleus then here we can identify at present at present the striatum means the putamen of the lentiform nucleus and the caudate nucleus head of the caudate nucleus together they called as the striatum so the striatum is subdivided into two parts called as ventral striatum and dorsal striatum let me show you another diagram over here yes here you can see that <clears throat> so the striatum is divided into two parts ventral striatum and the dorsal striatum okay so coming to this dorsal striatum dorsal striatum so this is the image for for dorsal striatum you can easily represent in examinations as well so the dorsal striatum consisting of classical striatum having caudate nucleus and putamen of lentiform nucleus okay so the caudate nucleus is separated the caudate nucleus exactly see here outer part it is nothing but the caudate nucleus and inner part is called as the lentiform nucleus so strictly speaking it is a putamen of lentiform nucleus so this is the caudate nucleus and inside one is the lentiform nucleus and putamen of lentiform nucleus so the dorsal striatum it is consisting of the classical striatum having caudate nucleus and putamen of lentiform nuclei the caudate nuclei, the caudate nucleus is separated from the lentiform nucleus uh, from the internal capsule fibers. So this white color one is nothing but the fibers of internal capsule. So these two are separated with each, separated with each other by the fibers of internal capsule, except at the lower part, lower part of the head. 
okay lower part of the head where it is communicated where it is joining with the continuous with the putamen of the lentiform nucleus can you find here so this white color one it is not extending up to here okay so outer one is as i said your lead is head of the cardiac nucleus this head is joining is continuous with the putamen of the lentiform nucleus okay so exactly where it is exactly is present is it is present just above the anterior perforated substance anterior perforated substance i think you remember the anterior perforated substance so where we have seen the anterior perforated substance is between the medial and lateral olfactory striae we can identify the triangular area called as the yes that is called as anterior perforated substance so this part exactly the communication between or continuation of the head, head of the cardiac nucleus and the putamen of the lentiform nucleus it is exactly present at the level of anterior perforated substance okay this area it is called as fundus striate fundus striate is a junction or continuation of the head of the cardiac nucleus and the putamen of lentiform nucleus okay so practically the anterior limb of internal capsule is broken can you see the broken pieces of internal capsule fibers so practically this anterior limb of internal capsule is broken into segments through which the head head and body of the cardiac nucleus cardiac nucleus are continuous with the putamen here also you can identify so between the fibers of the internal capsule anterior limb of internal capsule the cardiac nucleus is joining or continuous with the putamen of lentiform nucleus then the tail of the head of uh, tail of the cardiac nucleus here you can see the tail of the cardiac nucleus the tail of the cardiac nucleus is in the temporal lobe already i have shown you the diagram over here yes you can identify over here then it is continuous with the posterior inferior part of the putamen posterior inferior part so this is the anterior part of the putamen this is the posterior part of the putamen and here you can identify the posterior inferior part of the putamen so the tail of the cardiac nucleus is continuous with the posterior inferior part or posterior inferior aspect of the putamen of lentiform nucleus okay so the tail of the cardiac nucleus comes in superficial contact superficial contact with the amygdaloid body here you can identify amygdala so it is the tail of the cardiac nucleus it is uh, it is present near superficial contact with the amygdaloid body without any structural and functional connections then coming to the ventral striatum ventral striatum consisting of nucleus accumbens and olfactory tubercle nucleus accumbens and olfactory tubercle coming to the ventral striatum so <clears throat> ventral striatum consisting of nucleus accumbens and olfactory tubercle to see this we need to take a section at the level of anterior horn of lateral ventricle so here we are seeing the ventricles once again so the ventricles are the cavities which are present in each cerebral hemisphere so as we all know that there are two cerebral hemispheres are there in each cerebral hemisphere we can identify the cavities right and left cavities called as the lateral ventricles these lateral ventricles so regarding these lateral ventricles already have done one class so that you can see the class and you can understand something about it so the lateral ventricles it is having anterior horn posterior horn inferior horn and it is having a c shaped body so we are going to take a section coronal section at the level of anterior horn of the lateral ventricle okay so let us see that so here we are seeing we are taking a section of at the level of anterior horn of lateral ventricle so that you can identify the structures like this okay so what are the structures are present here are we can identify nucleus accumbens this nucleus accumbens which is present intervenes between the fundus striate means where the head of the cardiac nucleus and the putamen which are joining with each other that part is called as fundus striate so this nucleus accumbens is present between uh, 
fundus striati above and below it is present between para olfactory area so para olfactory area which is present in front of the linear terminalis so in front of the linear terminalis you can identify two sulci and the two gyri para terminal gyrus and the para olfactory gyrus that you can identify at the uh, medial surface of the cerebrum sulci gyri at the medial surface of cerebrum again we have discussed about these two terms so I'm just explaining you how the ventral striatum is present. So ventral striatum consisting of nucleus accumbens, which is intervenes between fundus striati above, below para olfactory area, and it is closely related, related to the septum, septal nuclei of septum pellucidum, septum pellucidum. Then olfactory tubercle is related. Olfactory uh, tubercle is related to closely to the lateral olfactory striae here you can identify the lateral olfactory striae so this olfactory tubercle which is we can identify in this ventral striatum area then coming to the dorsal pallidum dorsal pallidum what do you mean by pallidum so pallidum is nothing but the globus pallidus globus pallidus together we can call it as pallidum okay so the dorsal pallidum dorsal pallidum is formed by the classical globus pallidus which is subdivided by internal medullary lamina here you can identify this is nothing but internal medullary lamina into outer and inner segments so the ventral pallidum is lies in the anterior perforated substance so the ventral pallidum is present at the level of anterior perforated substance below the anterior commissure below the anterior commissure so remember this anterior ventral pallidum lies in the anterior perforated substance anterior perforated substance means which is nothing but so here you can see this ventral pallidum which is located at the level of anterior perforated substance which is present between medial and the lateral olfactory striae okay then here you can see the posterior part dorsal pallidum dorsal pallidum which is present uh, below this anterior commissure of internal capsule so internal capsule is nothing but the white fibers so the axons okay below this axons you can identify the dorsal pallidum so below this anterior perforated substance you can identify ventral pallidum so this is the demonstration of carpus striatum so in the next class we are going to discuss about the claustrum and after that we can going to discuss about amygdaloid body. Thank you students.